Hey, this is Sonny with my last first impression of the Model S Plaid. And um, that was a fun uh, acceleration, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about uh, uh, what my first impressions are of this car, which it's it's an amazing car. It, it really will spoil you. If, you. if you have a chance to rent it for a day, um, I would highly recommend it. But the problem is you're going to love it. You're going to want it in your life. Um, so be careful because either A, you're going to want to afford it and or B, um, uh, you know, you're just going to want to rent it every now and then, that kind of thing. So it's just one of those amazing cars. I actually have a Tesla to my left. I think he's checking out the Plaid. I think I'm going to say hi. Oh, he's, he's yeah, he's, he's loving the Plaid. Uh, I tried to talk to him or I was going to try to talk to him and say, hey, if you, if you want to see how fast this thing is, it's crazy. He's rocking a P90D and, uh, and you know, perhaps he saw how fast I took off and just, you know, was was thinking, hey, maybe I should upgrade. Um, but uh, anyway, so this is my impression. Um, it's it's a rocket ship, but it's a silent, refined rocket ship. Now I've got a cop here, so I don't know if I can uh, if I can keep doing this because uh, I think in New Jersey it's illegal to have a phone in your hand. So I'm going to restart this video. Okay, I'm back on. Uh, I continued on. I'm on a route that's basically a 55. 50 or 55 mile per hour route. I just set it on autopilot. I'm just going to enjoy. Um, there's a couple interesting things I think former Tesla owners will, will like to know about of this car. But um, let me go back to my first point. It's an absolute rocket ship. Um, what people were telling me about it, you know, yes, the 0 to 60 in 2.0 seconds is phenomenal. It's just so effortless. It's kind of like the Corvettes of old where they, when they switched to automatic transmission, it was just so easy to drive, so easy to get that exhilaration. And now it's just a step up, right? Um, when you talk about 2.4 seconds, 2.6 seconds, what have you, you're really talking about a 10, 20, 30% increase when you jump up to the, the Plaid. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like to drive a Roadster, if it's going to be that much better to do 1.9, you know, 0.1 second more. I don't know that it's going to, you know, justify a double the price up to 250000 but that's beside the point. This is an extremely refined car. So a couple of impressions. First of all, the background. I had a 2019 Model 3. I got the least expensive one. Just wanted to try it out, and sure enough, it worked well on the streets, but we just kind of stored it. Didn't drive it too much. Only did about 10K. Uh, but when we sold it, we actually barely had any any loss. I think we sold it for 38.5 after we bought it for, for 40, but then we had you know, uh, the federal tax discount and other things that kind of we sort of made money on it. So we're very happy about that. I'm hoping this, this stops. I'm not going to do anything. Yep. It stopped just a little aggressively. That was a little scary. Um, I don't think I've done stop and go from freeway traffic on, uh, on autopilot yet on this. So this was something I had to pay attention to. Anyway, uh, let's see if it continues. Yep. Continues without me, um, hitting the, the gas. All right. So, uh, so I came from a Model 3, uh, so I know about Autopilot, I'm not going to talk about like the simple stuff. So most people who are going to get this car are probably going to come from at least some sort of Tesla or if they at least driven a Tesla. So here are, the, here are the deltas, here are the differences between that car and, and this car. Number one, um, I, I wasn't from a Model S, I always thought, wow, wouldn't, it, wouldn't this car be so much nicer if I had just air suspension? And I would always kind of eye the Model S's. Uh, and I'm not sure if the Model X's have it or not, but uh, I really do think the air suspension makes a lot of difference because right now our current daily driver is a Model Y performance. And because of that, I'm actually seeing what people are talking about. Initially, I'm like, no, nah, this is not a rough ride when I was doing a test drive and then my first couple days. But now I'm starting to see that, yeah, it's it's got a bit of a rough ride, right? Like, should I really keep the Model Y performance for a long time versus getting into maybe a Model Y long range? Uh, buy the acceleration boost and get that from 4.8 seconds down to 4.2 seconds for its 0 to 60 speed, right? And that costs $2,000 through Tesla. It's a software update. So I'm thinking 4.2, it might be fast enough, especially if I get the softer wheels and I get the third row. Um, and, uh, you know, that might be the way to go, especially because in my area, in my uh, neighborhood, there's a lot of potholes, a lot, there's a lot of rough roads. So for us, maybe it makes more sense to, to not have such an aggressive car. That being said, this car, I drove around our neighborhood, drove around Jersey. I did about 100 miles here um, while I've had it. And uh, the air suspension and having these tires, these 19-inch tires that I have on this version, uh, have been really smooth. Like, I, 
it's a big difference. Like it's, it's truly a nicer experience to be in this car from a suspension, from a ride comfort level. Um, let me just bounce around to a couple other things as I think of them. Uh, number two, the, um, the seats have air ventilation. Uh, they say cooling. I'm not sure if it's just regular air or if it's actual cooling. But at the end of the day, I had that in my 2001 Lexus. And this is far better. Like, you can truly feel it. And there's three levels. You can actually choose from one of three levels of that ventilation. Uh, and when I hit it on the highest, and I'm usually wearing shorts, it's, it's really noticeable. And I have a call, so I'm going to restart again. Okay, to continue. Um... Yeah, the ventilation is actually substantial. Like, I'm not sure, I, I'm not a luxury car owner. We have, you know, we had a Tesla for quite a while and then most recently we bumped up to other Teslas. So I haven't been in the luxury car game for a while. Uh, maybe that's impressive to some people who have also have ventilation or not. I just find it a nice thing to have. Um, big one is a steering wheel, right? Um, so from a steering wheel perspective, it has been interesting. Most everybody I've brought out or tried the car, they love the steering wheel. For me, it's a love-hate. It's, it's, I know there are some things uh, I love about it. For instance, I can see this dash really well. That's amazing, right? Um, hold on, I got it. Slide right turning toward Millbrook Avenue. Sides um, for Millbrook Avenue, then turn right onto But Millbrook as you can see on this turn, I only had to do it, you know, maybe less than 90 degrees, right? And so as I did that, that's not a big deal because I could just hold one side. But it's these bigger ones that are the problem. So like this is going to be an aggressive 90 degree turn. So do I hold my hand here and do this? Um, that's kind of weird. So I don't know if the answer is yes. So I'm going to do another one here. And I'm going to hold from the bottom and pull over the cross. And that I feel is more natural, but I'm not there yet where it's like, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do an aggressive turn. And you know, it's, it's not just natural yet. And it's, it's going to take more than a day. I think it would come. Uh, I think people, other people who've done reviews have said, you know, ah, it's, it's, it's great. So nobody has said that, but I find myself oftentimes getting in the car, wanting to reach up here and boom, there's nothing there, you know, and, and including during turns. So for me, there's going to be a bit of a, um, a learning curve there but I'm I'm looking forward to it it's still great in other ways because number one again that seeing the dash there seeing the visuals on the model 3 you would have to look over to the side to see the visuals of what other cars are around you as a first guide um, and this one here you can kind of see it right in front of you and all the other information including the mini map that's all great just to have in a closer to the field of view of where your your eyes are supposed to be so it's just nicer in that sense um, the second thing is when you're going to zero to 60, you kind of want to hold on to something. You want to gra just grab onto, you know, a handle. I literally have told people, hey, you need to put your head back before I, you know, go zero to 60. And uh, I think it has worked out well because this thing is just whip flash, you know, waiting to happen. Um, so holding onto it with two hands when you do it is is quite nice. You know, as I tell my kids and other people, like this is the kind of steering wheel they have in, you know, airplanes. And it, it really does kind of come in handy in some respects. Uh, let's think of other other things that are interesting about the car. Uh, another thing I didn't like is the other day I brought in a, a wired uh, a USB-C cable and like the Model 3 and the Model Ys, I thought, okay, it'll just have a port back there and I just couldn't find the port. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not, but it's not easily found. I mean, it does have the wireless charging ports up here in the center console, but you know, I would like to be able to have a, a wired thing. One, because uh, I'd like to be able to charge my, my phone faster than wireless. And number two, I understand a lot of these ports are you know, strong enough to uh, power uh, a laptop or at least keep it not uh, dropping, meaning it's not gonna charge the battery in a laptop, but it might be enough juice to, um, to keep it from low lowering. So if you have it at 20%, you know, you plug it in, it'll stay at 20% for an hour, that kind of thing, right? So um, I didn't see that right away. It's probably there somewhere. Um, it's not like I did a ton of research before uh, getting and starting to use the Model S Plaid. That's what you usually should do. Uh, but this this video is more of an impressions thing. This is uh, intended for people who are thinking about buying it, thinking about upgrading, and th these are my thoughts after a day with it. Um, so let me go back to the rocket ship thing. It's just so nice to be able to go, you know, whatever speed. Here, I'm going 42. I wish I could gun it, but, you know, like, there's a person who turned in just, just now. I don't want to, you know, be super unsafe. That being said, if you're the kind of guy uh, or gal that is, you know, likes to gun it, 
um, you can get yourself in real problems here. Like you, you can get to 70 or 100 so quickly, like I did in my first couple of videos, that you know, if you're being aggressive and you're not being smart about it, you can get in real danger and you can really kill somebody quite easily and maybe yourself. So it's just so effortless to get to get fast in this thing. Um, next comment I'll have is the autopilot. So in the Model 3s and the Model Ys, I think they've, they've removed one of the types of radars. And so I think initially, you know, things are, things are kind of coming up to speed on it. And initially, wow, my Model Y was just uh, a wreck in terms of autopilot after it, uh, you know, first got to the point where I could use it. Um, I mean, I say it was a wreck, but it, it just, how to say it? Um, left, right, it has been fine, uh, but uh, forward backwards like stopping and, and slowing down and speeding up that's where it kind of wasn't very smooth and it's never been very smooth in stop and go traffic but uh, I will tell you that this Model S uh, its autopilot is extremely smooth uh, at all speeds and extremely accurate so I'm very impressed it's just a notch up you know the Model S and Model X are supposed to be you know for that you know a very small percentage of their sales of Tesla um, it's, for, it's supposed to be for those people who can just afford that much more and I can see why they, they really it's not just another Model 3 or Model Y with uh, you know a higher price tag the autopilot here in this car is significantly better um, the ride is better uh, a lot of things are better so I will say that it's, the autopilot is noticeably more smooth, which I, I like uh, because I leverage autopilot a lot when I'm driving. I'll either you know, do a quick text <clears throat> and if I see somebody passing me, I'll kind of look up and, and make sure I'm paying attention. But a lot of the time, if I'm you know just kind of on a, on a treadmill on the freeway, I, I will leverage autopilot a lot, whether that be to you know check a text or check an email or you know check my bank accounts, whatever. So, all right, what's the, what's the next thing I can talk about? Um, uh, let me see. Uh, interestingly enough, this car, when I got it delivered, there was, you know, it, when you go to any Tesla, you have to lift something in the back to get to the lower um, trunk storage area. This one actually came without that. Um, and I talked to them about seeing like I'm, I've got to cross my arm over to turn and make this aggressive turn. And that may be where I land on in terms of, especially when I do one handed driving, but it's still not natural. Uh, and to have to cross over like that for a turn is, it, I'm not sure if that's the future of what I would be doing with this car or not, but that's what I'm doing now. And, and it's, you know, I'm not sure what's going to be the most efficient. So, you know, check for maybe another video in the future as to, you know, what I find is, is the best way to do that. <clears throat> uh, anyway, what was I talking about? Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, in the trunk, you usually lift up a, a, a panel in order to get to the rear trunk area. But they said they had supply issues, so they said that several of these cars have been delivered without that panel. So I was one of them. So we'll see how quickly they get us that panel because honestly, with my Model Y that I took in June, they said we're really sorry for all these problems of the delays. So we're going to get you some free floor mats. And now it's you know the beginning of September, and I still haven't seen those floor mats. So. Not really sure when those will come in, but uh, it's not the biggest a deal. But it's it's just an annoyance, I guess, um, to not have that initially. Uh, and I'm sure as, as we use this more, you know, that will probably come in handy at some point. But <clears throat> for now, really, this is not the, you know, put your kids' toys and, and bikes and stuff in it. This is going to be the fun car and take he and his friends out to kind of, you know, they love to say it's the fastest car in the world. And is it? No, it's not the fastest car in the world. It's the fastest production car in the world. Is it? No. I think there's some company that came out with a car that you know starts with an N. It's 2.4 million dollars. So now I say that you know to him, I, I, not that he gets it at six years old, but I say to him, this is the fastest car under 2.4 million dollars, and that's true, right? Or I can say, uh, you know, this is the fastest car out there uh, under two million dollars is is the easiest way to say it. <clears throat> or you know, you have if you want to get faster in this car, you would have to pay two million dollars. And that's when people who are like, yeah, whatever about cars, then they're like. Yeah, let me come take a look at it. Let me let me see what it's like. You know that kind of thing, uh, at very least. And sometimes if they get in the car and they take a drive, um, I have not seen this kind of uh, uh, reaction from other people uh, on videos. But uh, one or two, like when my wife got in the car and I and I punched it, literally with 
before I got to like 40 or 50, she's like, stop, stop, don't do it. <laughs> so I had to really chill out and only go up to maybe 60 for her. Uh, and then I had another friend who got in the car and as like, soon as I hit it, she like curled up in a ball and said, no, stop. And so she didn't last long at all. So it really is truly an experience. Um, it's incredible. Um, it's something I haven't gotten used to, right? Like, A, you gotta be careful about it. B, I just, in a whole day, I haven't gotten used to it. I haven't gotten like, yeah, okay, I, I, I hit the gas and it's not a big deal. I have not gotten there. I don't know when I will get there. Uh, I don't think I would wanna drive this car every day, you know, from a risk perspective, especially in my neighborhood where uh, it's much more dense and more likely to get in an accident. But uh, it's it's been a really amazing car. I, I'm spoiled. Initially, my thoughts were, should I get a Model S with the 2.4 second, you know, for half the price around 65, 70K? Um, but, uh, but now I'm thinking this is the way to go. If I can get a Plaid now, uh, and and even if I just wanted to joyride it for like two months, right? Just drive it for two months, not even every day, just like every now and then when I wanna, you know, let a friend borrow it, do a favor for a friend for that, um, that might be fun to do. And honestly, if you buy one now, it's September 3rd, if you buy one now <clears throat> and then, you know, you drive it for two or four months, chances are you're not gonna lose any money. You might even make a little money in that time uh, and, and you'll have a blast. So that's where it comes down. And then t at today's interest rates where you're only paying 2.9% or, or something really small, you look at how much that costs you to have this car for that two or three months and it's incredible, it's cheap. So um, that's my review. If I have anything else to add, I'll add it in an in a additional video either in or not in the car. So thanks for watching, take care. Hey, this is Sunny with my last first impression of the Model S Plaid. And um, that was a fun uh, acceleration, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about uh, uh, what my first impressions are of this car, which it's it's an amazing car. It, it really will spoil you. If, you. if you have a chance to rent it for a day, um, I would highly recommend it. But the problem is you're gonna love it, you're gonna want it in your life. Um, so be careful because either A, you're gonna wanna afford it, and or B, um, uh, you know, you're just gonna wanna rent it every now and then, that kind of thing. So it's just one of those amazing cars. I actually have a test to my left. I think he's checking out the plaid. I think I'm gonna say hi. Oh, he's, he's yeah, he's, he's loving the plaid. Uh, I tried to talk to him, or I was gonna try to talk to him and say, hey, if you, if you wanna see how fast this thing is, it's crazy. He's rocking a P90D, and uh, and you know, perhaps he saw how fast I took off and just, you know, was was thinking, hey, maybe I should upgrade. Um, but uh, anyway, so this is my impression. Um, it's, it's a rocket ship, but it's a silent, refined rocket ship. Now I've got a cop here, so I don't know if I can, uh, if I can keep doing this, because uh, I think in New Jersey it's illegal to have a phone in your hand, so I'm going to restart this video.